Bom dia. Bom dia. Good morning. I was actually expecting to have your laptop so I could see my slides, but I will be walking around if you guys don't mind. All right, so there we go. Okay, just a brief introduction about myself. I have masters in internet business. I have worked seven years for Angola Cables, uh, whereby I was glad to be part of a wonderful team implementing the South Atlantic Cable System, the first between Africa and South America. And I also was one of the responsibles uh, of Angonix, which is the second internet exchange point um, hosted in Angola. I have been uh, working with the technical team for our um, technical and business team almost three years on Angonix, whereby we were able to connect like 90 members and we had a quite interesting peak of traffic on that platform. Other than that, I'm currently working for DigX. Uh, if you guys don't know, DigX is the largest, largest internet exchange point. Uh, with the main peering fabric uh, in Frankfurt. Right now I'm based in Portugal, whereby I'm just running the DKX Lisbon Internet Exchange Point uh, since the 1st of April of this year. On a volunteer level, uh, I do work together with Silvio, Ernesto, and other, on the volunteers of um, Angola Internet Association. And I was working with the program committee for the Global Peering Forum this year in Canada. And I have been since one of December just been appointed to uh, the next program committee for AFPIF, uh, which is very, very interesting. And hopefully I can contribute with the communities. On the other hand, we uh, organized last uh, week uh, the first interconnection uh, conference uh, together with the AONOC, the Network Operators Group. And we do have uh, quite a few volunteers in the room, Lilia Carvalho, Mr. Diole, Ernesto and Silvio, who helped us out in setting up this first conference in Angola. So we had around 80 participants, which was very good because we were able to tackle um, a couple of technical problems, right? So this is uh, actually the agenda. I uh, will be picking up a few points that Mr. Silva just mentioned, but I will give you guys a broader overview about the interconnection ecosystem in Angola. So uh, I'm right now speaking uh, as an OG member and not as a DKIX uh, employee. And by saying that we are a team of volunteers um, working on the internet, a national internet backbone and trying to help uh, ISPs, uh, universities, uh, carriers with uh, technical problems, with the business problems. And also uh, with Mr. Silvio, we are trying to do something interesting for the Angola AXP, which was founded in 2006. So uh, as a volunteer, uh, together with other team members, uh, what we try to do is actually uh, to um, not only to bring people from abroad, but also to uh, engage uh, with the local people and share experience, as uh, Ilya mentioned, right? So there are two mailing lists uh, on the slides. If you want, just take a picture, or I do ask the organization to share my slides. Please feel free to join it, so you guys can be a part of the local community and help us out whether we have a problem or not. On the national subsea backbones, so, as you can see on the left hand side, we had the Satri cable, which was implemented in 2002 with a designed capacity of 40 gigabits. And then uh, on my left, left side, your right side, we do have WAX cable, which was implemented in uh, 2012 with uh, a designed capacity of 40 terabits per second. 
And last but not least, we have the South Atlantic Cable, which was implemented last year, right? So those are the designed capacities, uh, but most, mainly the SAT3 and the WAX are, have already been upgraded a um, couple of times. So talking a little bit about uh, what we did in the past, and sorry for keeping looking back because I cannot actually see good the slides, if you don't mind, I just jump here. Um, out of my own experience and after these two cable implementations, we did so a price decrease on the, uh, internet bandwidth, which is, which is good, right? Because everybody can get access, it, access to it. And then what we, do, what we did with the local internet exchange points, we guaranteed to maintain um, local traffic. And I will show you in further slides what I actually mean by that. And then one of the last points was actually to have a faster internet with better quality. So that's what we um, worked for these last years. I have a quote from a company called Cloudflare when they implemented the edge pop in Luanda uh, for the first time, uh, they were seeing more than a billion uh, requests coming from our local community, which is good because prior to that, uh, this content was being hosted outside of the country. Let me give you a status quo uh, overview about this interconnection system. So what we actually did last week was we had this slide whereby we asked some questions and I will do the same again to ask if you are a local ISP or IXP, can you just please raise your hands? No, mainly internationals. So the reason why I did ask this question was because we have today individuals who can help and share their experience with our local community by saying that if you don't know what the peering DB record is, then just chat with someone around, Mr. Nico, Jordi, uh, or whatsoever, and you can, then we can explain you guys how to create your own peering record. And we did went into Mars, uh, Looking Glass, um, RPKI, and even IPv6 implementations, for instance. So my previous slide, I spoke about uh, the peering DB, peering DB, right? So um, I pick it up a raw data and try to work out this graph and to see how many. Uh, so we have uh, 56 registered ISNs according to Hurricane Electric site. And then we were seeing which of these 56 had a peering DB record. And apparently the IXPs Angola XP and Angonix, they were doing a very good job because uh, that's two out of two, which is good. Congratulations, guys, on that. And then by looking into the ISPs, there are 15 ISPs um, uh, managing their own, own autonomous system number, and almost 60% have a peering DP record. So it's still uh, quite a work to be done on that. Impressive is to see that there is many banks in Angola with their own autonomous system numbers, but none of them have their own peering DB record. Why is peering DB so important? Because if we are coming from Congo, Cameroon, or any other country uh, of this world into Angola, then you need to know which parties you can talk to, right? So the peering DB record, if you feel your information, then makes life easier for everybody. I just mentioned about the IX, local IXPs in Angola, so I do give you a brief overview in that. Um, Angola IXP was implemented in 2006. They do have 20 members connected and they are hosted or co-located on the Angola Telecom Data Center. And according to Mrs. Silvio, they saw so far a peak of traffic of around one gig. And then if we look into Angonix, which, is, which was launched in 2015, and it is located on Angonap, which is being managed by Angola Cables, they do count with 19 networks so far and they have seen um, a peak traffic around 14 gigabits of traffic, of peering traffic. So one of the things that we also spoke last week on the NOG meeting was trying to see what we can do 
together with Mr. Silva and Ernesto from Angola XP, how we can try to increase the traffic on the peering platform. So the title of this slide is how many registered data centers are in Angola today. I just saw the booth of MS Telecom and I do know that they run their own data centers. But again, if I'm coming from Spain or I'm coming from Morocco, then the picture that I will see regarding data centers in Angola is this one, right? Because those guys did create a record in um, data center maps, right? Which is the site where mostly, most likely everybody goes to create the record so uh, the international audience knows about their uh, data center facility. And so far, I could find three records, one from uh, Multipla, uh, ITA, and also Angonab from Angola Cable. So if you are local data center operator, just make sure to create your own records. So talking about the decade growth of the internet in Angola, we can look into both graphs from um, uh, Oracle, Dane slash Oracle now that we have a pretty much um, exponential lines, although the right, well, the left graph is becoming more linear, uh, but um, it's, a, it's a good reference for us. It means that we have been growing for the last decade, but concerning that if you look into 2019, there is a slightly drop coming, coming our side. So we will be monitoring that as well. Oops, let me just go. All right, so uh, when it comes to the IP addressing, we can see, uh, if you remember my first slides on the subsea cables, we saw that we waited in 2012, right? So uh, on this graph, we can see that uh, the prefix allocations in 2012 at the highest peak at so far in Angola. When it comes to the IPv4 allocation, um, this source from Afrinic itself, and everybody can get access to it. But again, I just wanted to point out that in 2012, again, we had the highest peak on IPv4 allocation for uh, the local ISPs or local um, uh, carriers in Angola, right? So we even can see that there was um, a slash 13, slash 15, and a slash 17 allocation in, only in 2012. So for my fellow um, uh, country um, uh, brothers, I do recommend you to use the resources that you ask for Mafrinic, because if you don't use it and you get a location, then you might be penalizing someone who is in need to be using those resources. Uh, global overview on how the internet currently looks like in Angola, and I think most of the Africa countries, maybe expecting from South Africa. But if you look on my left side, you only see tier one carriers, right? So we're talking about Telesonera, GTT, Tata, and so on and so on. And then most of this traffic is being routed to, routed to IS37468, which is Angola cables. But before that, you do see some tier two, tier three providers, which get internet access from the tier ones, and suddenly they do uh, uh, send the traffic or the internet traffic to the local companies in Angola. So on the third row, we can see Angola Cables and also Internet Technologies of Angola, ITA, which is doing a pretty good job. And they're a little bit far away, we see Angola Telecom and the rest of the autonomous system numbers of Angola. So challenges and how to tackle that. Yeah, it would be a challenge for me to drive there. <laughs> I never did, but... <laughs> so talking about IPv6, I think that was one of the keynotes in the beginning, yes. Uh, RIPE just announced that they're running out IPv4s. Uh, LACNIC might be in the next year, somewhere in next year, be running out of IPv4s. And by saying that, I do have a group of friends whereby we normally talk about sports and technology and so on and so on. And when I do speak with them about IPv6, they call me crazy. 
but as mentioned, IPv6 is not a trend anymore. So if you look into this graph, you can see that in 2011 and 2012 again, uh, there were quite of a few allocations made uh, of, uh, based on slash 32s for local companies, but there is 0, 0.0 usage on IPv6 in Angola. So that's not a good number. And if you do run your own backbone uh, as a local operator, please feel free to engage with the professionals from other region which do run IPv6 on their countries. I know Yordi is pushing for IPv6 very heavily globally. So if you want to share some experience and to talk with him, he's just sitting here in front. So feel free to do so. I can help as well. On the other hand, I, it's not a trend again, it's happening right now. So that's a, a graph from APNIC where you can see IPv6 growth in Africa. So if we don't care about IPv6 in Angola, then we might be left behind. And why? Because if we look into our neighbor countries, they are doing that, right? So I asked permission of a very good friend of mine who runs the backbone for a company called GVA. And he did implement the IPv6, for instance, almost 1.50% in Congo Brazzaville, which is just right next door. And then we look into Gabon with almost 14% of IPVC usage. So my question is, if they can do it, we also can do it, right? So take advantage of this week to interact with our regional and international participants and try to implement as soon as possible IPV6 on your backbone. Talking, talking a little bit, uh, another challenge, which I do like to talk about it, which is traffic engineering. Um, so traffic engineering, if you're a carrier or internet service provider, it should be your main priority. Why? Because you are serving your end customers. And your end customers might be one of your family members uh, at home using mobile or using uh, FTTH to surfo surf over the internet and to get access into certain content. So if we look into this graph or this um, trace route, there is a certain content, uh, Brazilian content, which is hosted in Angola. Uh, by a company called IP World, whereby they just announced this partnership with this um, South American CDN. But if you look into the trace route, you can see on the red that the customer is a Movisil customer. And then he has to go to Angola Telecom because he's buying transit from Angola Telecom, obviously. So that means that Angola Telecom is responsible to send these packets uh, on the shortest past possible, right? But what does it happen if we look into this picture? Is that the packets go <laughs> in Europe or some, every, uh, somewhere else? And then Angola Cables picks up the traffic uh, somewhere outside of Angola and brings it back again to this company called IP World. So we are talking about, oh, I can see it from here, but yeah, roughly 300 milliseconds of latency. So just imagine you are now surfing on your PCs and mobiles, and if you do access this site, you have to travel the globe and come back again, right? Because the main carriers don't have a peering agreement between them. So that's critical for us and critical for everybody. And we did so the same, oh, I did so the same, for instance, with Unitel Backbone, uh, because after Cloudflare announced that they did deploy the CDN in Angola, you should expect a latency less than five milliseconds. And what do we see on that picture, on that trace route? We see that the packets go first to Lisbon and then they come back again. So you are paying for uh, traffic or uh, yeah, traffic uh, and a content which is hosted locally. So you're expanding money by that. Your financial, your CFOs, they are paying a bill which they shouldn't be paying. Again, right, and then this affects the quality, and at the end of the day, this affects your end customers as well. In this case, Unitel end customers. Uh, that's more an OG slide, whereby I was asking around who is running a looking glass uh, in Angola, and I only found two, one from Angonix and the other one from Angola Cables. But Mr. Silvio also mentioned that Angola XP, that they do have one, so I do apologize myself to not include in here. 
but I will do so because looking less is very important for if you run a carrier backbone or even an IXP. So people from abroad or even your own customers can uh, look into, into the records. Just to give you guys a briefly overview, uh, seven, almost eight years when I came back from the Netherlands, where I was, uh, and I joined the Angola Cables, we didn't have most likely nothing in the country. When I say nothing, is global content also in Angola. So we did work on getting Akamai, Facebook, Cloudflare, Google, Netflix caches. Uh, I saw a uh, um, highlands on Asian, which is the South American CDN that they just made a partnership with a company called Multiplus slash IP World. And that means that the content which this CDN cares is now also available in Angola. But those are only caches, right? Because if you look into a broader picture, which is a slide from telegeography, you can see that the main pops are most likely, if we look into Africa, South Africa, Microsoft, Amazon is also playing something. So being an Angolan citizen, for us, um, South Africa is not that far away, luckily. But for others in Central Africa, it might be a problem. Uh, I did share some uh, important links with the community. Uh, again, if you want to take pictures of the left inside mailing list, please do so and join us. Okay. All right. Then just feel free to take a picture and to join us on the mailing list. What's next for us, for the Angolan Peering Forum and the Angolan Network Operators Group? First things first, we will actually change our logo um, due to the fact that there is already a APF, which is Asian Peering Forum. So to not get in conflict, we, will, we already have a new logo, uh, AOPF. We will also need more support from, uh, in terms of PC members. Uh, this year we were only four, but we will need more for the next year's event. We will be uh, thinking about of having, instead of only two days, uh, maybe in having three or four days in 2020. The place is not defined yet, but if all agree, I'm uh, pretty much okay to go to the most. And if you guys want to join, feel free to do so. Uh, also, last but not least, we're going to present a new structure whereby uh, it will be announced uh, board members the PC committee, and so on, so on. And question and answers we'll take afterwards. So, muito obrigado.